Gnome seems to be something you either love or you hate. Among the people who actually know about it, there is this very small error in the center where you just don't really care about it and go about your day. But recently I saw this interesting article, an interesting theory, about the connection between Gnome and Wayland. Wayland XDG Shell Protocol is tailored only for Gnome's needs. Now that does sound pretty crazy, but let's just explore the idea and basically see where it takes us. So before we can do that, we need a bit of understanding about the way that Wayland is formed and the way that Wayland is structured. So when the Wayland developers started defining the protocol, they had to decide what functionalities to include in the protocol. They decided to make the protocol as minimal as possible and compositors shall create new protocols for their specific use cases if they desire to offer more functionality not included in the main protocol. This main protocol is called the Wayland Core Protocol. So you can see everything involved in the Wayland Core Protocol on this website here. I'll leave it linked in the description down below. Basically, it explains every function that is available and what you can actually do with just a pure Wayland compositor. Anything outside of this core protocol are called protocol extensions. Now, there are tons of these extensions, many of which you won't care about, and way too many to list in one video. We have some KDE extensions, things like KDE Idle. We have things like KDE Plasma Shell. And then over on the WL root side, you have things like WLR Layer Shell, or WLR Gamma Control. And depending on the implementation of your compositor, you may decide to actually mix and match some of these protocols to get some things from KDE, get some things from WLR, and maybe add some of your own protocols for extra things you might want to do. Now, one of the things that is required to be a Wayland compositor is to make sure you implement the entirety of the core protocol. It doesn't have to be done well, but it does have to be implemented. So if you're something like Western, for example, which is the reference implementation of Wayland, you're going to stop at that core protocol. When it comes to the protocol extensions, you don't actually need to implement any of them. However, the reason for these extensions is there is a lot of applications and a lot of use cases out there that rely on these extensions. So when you see an app that only works on WL Roots or only works on KDE or only works on GNOME, this is exactly why. There is some protocol implemented inside of that environment that doesn't exist anywhere else. Now, an extra helpful developer will tell you exactly what that protocol is going to be. Generally, though, they skip over that and just say the environment. So the point of having Wayland's core protocol be as minimal as possible is to allow the usage of Wayland in places other than the desktop, like embedded systems, VR, I would add mobile to that, and things like that. So Wayland's core protocol is not enough to even create desktop applications. That's why we have a protocol extension called XDG Shell. And while this is a protocol extension, it's basically a standard. And with all that in mind, this is the author's opinion. My opinion is that this protocol is tailored for GNOME's needs. I mean, the functionalities that exist in the protocol are the bare minimum required for the GNOME desktop and apps to work on Wayland, as I'm going to show you in this article. So below this, he lists out three facts that he says indicates that this is the case. The first one being, the protocol requires that desktop visual components be drawn by the compositor. The second one being, CSD is implementable, although clients can't move their window, and CSD is a must in the protocol. We'll start with the first one. On most desktop environments, desktop components like the dock, panel, wallpaper, desktop icons, and things like that are treated like regular clients. So they are treated like any other window you might open on your system, like a terminal, a browser, or anything else like that. For those components to work though, they need certain functions to be implemented by the compositor. Those functions include the ability to move the window, ability to tell the compositor not draw decorations around said window, so you don't want like a close icon around your wallpaper, for example, or around your bar, things like that. Ability to keep it above all windows in the case of a panel, or below all windows in the case of a background, along with some additional functionalities. Now over on the X11 side, this is handled by what is known as the ICCCM specification, the Inter-Client Communication Conventions Manual. But on Wayland, it's not exactly that simple, because XDG Shell doesn't allow that to happen. This means that desktop environments have to draw all of these elements inside of the compositor. 
So basically what that means is things like docks are not being treated like regular windows. They are just being drawn directly to the screen by the compositor. And GNOME is the only desktop that actually does that. And obviously anything that forks GNOME falls in the same category as well. But when it comes to things like KDE, they don't do that. They still treat their dock and things like that like regular clients. So KDE and other desktops get around this by relying on protocol extensions. And this works great if you're just using what ships with that desktop. But what about for components that don't ship with the desktop that are aiming to be cross desktop components? Things like Plank Dock and Latte Dock over on the X11 side. These, while being made with KDE in mind, they can be used anywhere else. So this shifts that work onto the developers of these cross desktop applications. Because now you don't just have to support XDD shell, you need to support XDD shell, and then whatever KDE is doing, then whatever this is doing, whatever that is doing, and it makes it a lot harder to actually get things functioning. On to the second point. CSD stands for Client Side Decorations. I plan to do a full video on this, but basically the debate is between Client Side Decorations and Server Side Decorations. So, window decorations are basically things like the border, things like your header bar where you might have the close button, the window title, and things like that. So, Client Side Decorations are where the window itself will go and draw those decorations. Server-side decorations are where the compositor or the server will go and draw the decorations instead. All that's really important for today though is that GNOME uses client-side decorations and then KDE and basically everything else for the most part uses server-side decorations. So I've read this section maybe 20 or 30 times, but I'm not really sure the point the author is trying to make here. So basically, windows aren't able to go and move themselves. The way that a window moves is that the compositor will go and tell it to move. The reason why it's like this is for things like VR scenes or 3D space, things that aren't typical desktop environments where if a window was to move itself, it might move into a really weird location. I don't really know what that has to do with CSD. I don't really know what that has to do with CSD though. Third point, which I think should just be in the second point, is a little bit more interesting. So over on the X11 side, while there is certainly debate about whether CSD or SSD is the best approach, it doesn't really matter because the applications can decide what they want to be using. So if you're in a GNOME environment, it's going to rely on CSD. If you're in KDE, for example, it's going to rely on SSD instead. On Wayland, the compositor can decide if it wants to use SSD, but there's a slight issue. The applications with XDG shell don't know if they are currently being decorated. So here's the predicament then. Should applications always use CSD because there's going to be compositors that don't use SSD? But what about the ones that do use SSD? Now you have two layers of decorations. But what if the application doesn't use CSD and the compositor doesn't use SSD? Now you have no decorations and there's no easy way to graphically close the application. But as the author says, there is a protocol extension that fixes that. And let's just assume for a moment that XG Shell actually is designed around what GNOME needs, which I don't entirely believe is the case. We have things like Layer Shell. Layer Shell will later draw things like your dock and desktop icons and whatever else you need outside of the compositor and make them work the way you'd expect them to work on something like KDE. Then we have things like XDG decoration, which in cases where you want to decide between CSD and SSD, it lets the application know what it's using. And that actually is being used in various libraries. We have things like the GTK layer shell library, and it's part of WO Roots and KDE. And both these protocols, while being developed separately by KDE and WO Roots, are actually being used in both of the environments. So while not being a part of the official standard for Wayland, it is a de facto standard for the Wayland desktop, with the exception of GNOME. Because GNOME doesn't need this functionality, so they don't want to implement it. You can 100% make an argument that the direction of Wayland 
is guided somewhat by the GNOME developers, but it is also guided by the KDE developers and also the WL Roots developers and anybody else out there who might be interested in Wayland. Because if you're going to be building something with Wayland in mind, you're going to want to get involved in those discussions to make sure your voice is heard and make sure that changes are going to be made that you know benefit your project and preferably benefit everybody else involved. But ultimately, I think this is kind of putting the cart before the horse, making the argument that Wayland is designed around GNOME instead of the other way around. When GNOME was being ported to Wayland, it was designed around the way that Wayland works. Yes, they were absolutely part of the discussions to make it work in the way that would be most beneficial to them, but I don't think it was entirely designed around what they needed for their project. But then when KDE wanted a port and where projects like WL Roots started popping up, they wanted to do it in their own way, and they wanted to keep doing it in the way they were doing it on X11. So... That's what they did. And because they were trying to be a lot more, I guess, open projects is one way to put it, they wanted to go and work together and work on these protocol standards. But maybe you disagree with me and instead agree with the author. In which case, let me know in the comment section down below. That's going to be it for me. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, 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 pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.